Hello everyone! Today I'm going to be reviewing the new single, the first single officially, off of Florence and the Machine's upcoming fourth studio album titled High as Hope, which is coming out June 29th as we all speculated. She has just announced the pre-order and she now has released the new song Hunger, which is the official lead single off of this album. A Sky Full of Song, which I have already viewed, reviewed on this channel, which I will link in the description, was sort of just a buzz single for Record Store Day back in April. So I kind of consider that the first official single. This is, Hunger is a little bit more of a statement song and I can see why she wanted to consider this the first single. This is a more classic belting song. This is a power anthem song. And it has that energy that Sky Full of Song was a lot more subdued and mellow. And this song picks up that energy, which is of course something that's very classic to Florence. I think this is a good bridge between old and new for her. We've got very beautiful, sparse, but very cutting vocals that she has, like, humming in the background in the production. We have this very off-kilter, but very clappy, very fun rhythm that's made with the piano. And then the um, the way it picks up in the instrumentation, it's, it's electric. This song has an energy to it that you can't help but want to dance to. Even if the melody has a little bit of trouble, I think, finding its footing as it goes to the chorus, it sort of clumsily finds its way through. And I don't actually have a problem with it. With repeated listens, you get used to it and the kind of uncanny, unbalanced sort of uh, framework that this song revolves around is actually really alluring after a while. But I think it's important that the song is the way it is because the lyrics really want to take center stage. Same with Sky Full of Song. You spend so much time really focused on what she is sometimes shouting, but what she is really declaring to you. This song, as she has recently discussed in an interview on BBC Radio 1, to her, a very abstract song and a song that really wasn't meant to be a song. It was deeply personal to her. It was basically a poem that she decided to eventually put to music that she wasn't convinced was gonna make the record. It speaks about how we all have a hunger. Hunger for what? Is this a feeling of loneliness? The lyrics, I mean, listen to them. At 17, I started to starve myself. I thought that love was a kind of emptiness. And at least I understood then the hunger I felt. And I didn't have to call it loneliness. What is she reflecting on now? What is she saying about love now? Is love actually what she was actually looking for back then? Did she understand really what love was about? Or was she using, you know, uh, alcohol, using, you know, a quick kiss with a stranger? Was she using this sort of empty, shallow love as a substitute? We all have a hunger. Tell me what you need. You look so free. The way you use your body, baby, come and work it for me. Don't let it get you down. You're the best thing I've seen. We never found the answer, but we knew one thing. She talks about in the interview how this song is kind of posing this ultimate existential question, which is, what is it that we all are looking for to feel fulfilled and to satisfy this hunger that is inside of all of us? And she doesn't really have an answer. She doesn't really think there is a universal answer, as it is different for every single person. But when we ask these questions amongst ourselves to one another, when we we unburden ourselves of our vulnerability when we talk about our loneliness, when we talk about our yearnings for things, our love um, or our heartbreak. That's where we actually heal because we say, oh, you know, I feel the same way too. I feel very empty and lonely as well, but I feel less lonely now that you've shared your vulnerability with me. And it's Friday night and it's kicking in and I can't dress. They're going to crucify me. Oh, but you and all your vibrant youth, how could anything bad ever happen to you? You make a fool of death with your beauty. And for a moment, I thought that love was in the drugs, but the more I took, the more it took away. And I could never get enough. I thought that love was on the stage. You give yourself to strangers. You don't have to be afraid. And then it tries to find a home with people. And I'm alone, picking it apart and staring at your phone. This is again alluding to thinking back and how she used to live her life so much more reckless and so much more searching for the extreme highs and probably some of the wrong places, but not necessarily the wrong places. It's just that she wasn't able to find her, the peace within herself in understanding the relationship she was having with other people. There was actually a through line that was actually her own insecurity or her own lack of self-love that was causing this loneliness, this existential loneliness that was plaguing her throughout her life. You make a fool of death with your beauty and for a moment I forget to worry. I often think of that with people who look so carefree and so perfect. Their lives from a distance 
are a paragon of beauty and perfection. And how could death even face you? You know, like nothing bad is going to happen to you. You know these people I'm talking about. I mean, we all know them. They're From a distance, their lives are viewed as so beautiful. I love how in the music video, we have all of this classical sculpture, which, you know, for Greco-Romans, this was like the height of beauty, you know, high art was the idealized, you know, masculine and feminine forms carved into stone or into marble. And so she's dancing amongst all these statues, and she's imbuing life back into them. She's because they are like these relics, and they represent, uh, a classical sort of beauty that has through the ages been something we all kind of aspire to but can cause so much pain in the process of doing so and so she's she's interestingly kind of reckoning this ideology that we all have striving for this idealism that is so lofty that we can never reach which is beauty which is unending happiness which is wealth which is you know something that's almost not even really real because love is difficult. Love is dirty. Love is also painful. And we have to accept that along with the beauty, of course, that is in life. And she's planting, you know, she puts like some greenery on the hand of a sculpture. And it's sort of giving it like warmth. It's not to say that the sculpture is cold, but it's, it's, it's representing something that is immovable and somewhat devoid of life. This is how I'm interpreting it, by the way. This is me kind of placing my own understandings um, into the imagery, which is very tied up into this idea of what is beauty, what is what is the true goal of life. All of these things are what this song is getting at, what the hunger is that is within all of us. It's a really lofty song. I have a feeling, like the title describes, High as Hope, this is going to be a very lofty, reaching album. But yet at the same time, what makes it so grand and what makes it so lofty is the fact that it's finding the joy in the simple things. You know, uh, it, it's, it's it's finding it in sculpture, it's finding it in art, it's finding it in stillness, it's finding it in deep personal conversations with one close friend. This album is definitely not, I mean, it's similar to so far in my view of like how big, how blue, how beautiful was so much about this existential crisis, but it was such a big crashing storm and it was this huge dramatic heartbreaking, heart-wrenching event that was so dramatic and this album is sort of the aftermath of that. The storm is clearing and we're answering some of these questions we've had that are underneath all of the sort of relationship turmoil that we've now sorted through. Um, anyway, I'm really curious to see how this record's going to unravel. It seems like a really mature and rooted album. Uh, you know, it's down to earth and yet at the same time lofty. I don't know if this is making any sense, by the way. I very often make much sense. So I'm sorry if I'm just rambling, but let me know in the comments what you have your thoughts on this song. I definitely think it's fun to dance to. It's giving me vibes of songs like Rabbit Heart or also songs like I get a little bit of Third Eye in there. Um, this this euphoric need to dance out the pain. Um, but it's not like over dramatic like Shake It Out was, even though I love that song. So... Uh, I will say this, I've now reviewed the two songs that are the like, two big singles from this record so far. Because the album is only 10 songs and it's not that long till the album is released, I will not be reviewing, or I mean I will be listening to, but I will not be reviewing on this channel any songs that are dropped between now and June 29th for this record. So, you know, just so you guys know, because it's just going to spoil the record if I talk too much about all the other songs before the actual release, especially since it is a shorter album, unfortunately. But you know what? Short albums can be really good, really concise, really structured. So I'm really looking forward to June 29th. I didn't think we were getting a Florence record so soon. And then it just is all here now. And I highly recommend, please watch that BBC Radio 1 interview with, with Annie Mack. It's very, very uh, cathartic and fun to listen to her speak and explain different songs on this record. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Peace, love, and light. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye.